Malaysia is so rich with its goings on. And I think that feeds into the art scene. I'm really impressed. I feel like collector is a very grand word, but it's just, I'm somebody who just loves art. Collecting Malaysian art, but then also collecting things that are connected with my heritage as a South Asian Sri Lankan Tamil. Sivaraja, who is the Sutra House director, they had commissioned a collection of Malaysian artists so the, to do various portraits and their interpretation of Odyssey dancers and um, that was shown in the Petronas Gallery in conjunction with the Odyssey Dance International. So fresh from that, I got to see the plethora of Siva's work at Sutra House in 2008. And, it, and I said to myself, if I ever could collect art, this is where I would start. And fast forward a few years later, I did start collecting and was Sivaraja's work. Came to Malaysia specifically to meet him and to meet Bayu Otomo, of whom we also have two pieces from the Odyssey series. Luckily enough, those were the last two pieces that Bayu had. I think that, you know, having not been here for the longest time, somehow at no point did my soul not yearn for being in Malaysia, I have to say. So when there was the opportunity to start collecting, of course I would always want to come home first and foremost. The reminder of home and having it around you constantly just grounds you in who you are and where really your your thoughts, your emotions, and your spirituality is, really. And I, and I do feel that with Malaysians in the diaspora, that they're very much still rooted in who we are as a country and as a people. And having seen that Te Tarik uncle, who is such a popular figure for all of us, we all grew up with that identification with the Te Tarik uncle because we spent so much time there talking about everything, putting the world to rights. And so he's such a familiar figure. The first piece of Zaki's, I'm trying to think now, we actually went to a studio, 2018 I think, and that piece of Zaki's from the Orang Orang collection, it was the only piece that they had left. And I saw it um, and it's tremendous. And the fact that Zaki is able to celebrate that and you know, and having it in my home is also celebrating the national identity of who we are as Malaysians. So this was purchased during lockdown. This is part of Zaki's Varanasi series where he had what they would call in, uh, in India a sadhu, a holy man. Um, and so the fact that Zaki managed to capture again the essence of the sadhu so brilliantly is also testament to me of who we are as Malaysians that we transcend so many different you know human created boundaries and I think artists really do I think in their soul they're they're striving for social justice I think they're really striving for an equitable world I love the powerful voice of a young generation and they refuse to be excluded I love the confidence they have I also love the fact that some of the young artists I've seen are reminiscent about a Malaysian history. We are international, we are world class, we do appeal to a cosmopolitan audience. Malaysia was diverse before diversity was a buzzword. It's going to be a rocky path, but it is for everybody. But this is where the art then becomes very interesting because it chronicles and documents where we are going, where we have come from. And in terms of the quality, I absolutely think so. It is, it stands up with international artists for sure. We just need to get our name out there and we need to be ambassadors for Malaysian art.